What's up 360 North fans? Today we're going to talk about brake pads. We're going to swap the brake pads on the 2015 Autocad XR 700. I purchased this bike with 685 kilometers on it and if you follow our other content you saw I had to replace the axle. While I tore it down I noticed that the uh, inside brake pad was basically metal on metal and it only has 685 kilometers on it so I don't know uh, what happened but anyway we got to change them before the brake disc gets ruined. It's a very simple procedure to do. The only thing is you're going to need is a way to jack up the bike. You'll need a 17 millimeter socket to remove the tire and a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet to remove the caliper. You need a new set of brake pads and some blue Loctite. We'll get to it. First we'll remove the tire. I've already jacked the bike up because I'm using uh, air tools. If you're going to be using uh, like a breaker bar or something, just loosen up the tire before you lift it up. It is possible sometimes to inspect the brakes and how much they've got left without taking the tire off. You can kind of peek in from underneath or at the side with the wheels turned and a light shining in. Or you can just pop the tire off like we have and visually inspect it. Now because we've already changed the other side, it's a no-brainer, we're going to change this side as well because you change them together. This side is just as shot as the other one, so we're going to remove it and replace the pads. You need a 10 millimeter socket in order to pop that. Bolts off, you're ready to remove the caliper. Let's give it a little shimmy. Oh. Lots of leaves and crud and stuff in there. In order to remove them, push the caliper slide all the way to the back so it rests against the piston. Once it's pushed all the way to the back, and then slide the pads off. Kind of got to do one side then the other. And if this is the first time you've ever done your brakes, there is an O-ring in here. Um, that's not required when you take it all apart. Uh, you can remove that O-ring, you don't have to put that back on. For some reason they put that on there when they ship the bikes. There you go. It makes it a tighter fit with that O-ring on there, so um, push the side in that doesn't have the O-ring, kind of with your hands, and then wiggle it off. You'll find it'll go a little easier. There we go. And yeah, this one's, you know, it's kind of scalloped on this side a little bit more uh, than the front side. Um, but basically, uh, yeah, it was already metal on metal on this side, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. We may end up having to change the discs at some point, which is, going to be a little bit costly. So you want to keep an eye on that and try to avoid that happening. All right guys, real quickly, I just want to show you the kind of situation I was in with the brake pads. So on the bottom of the frame, uh, you can see the two pads are kind of gold colored. The one on the very bottom was the inner brake pad. And you can see it's pretty well worn to nothing. It's just about metal on metal. The one in the middle is the outer brake pad. And you can see that it's likely more than half used up already. And then the black colored one at the back or at the top of the frame. That's the brand new one. You can see it's got quite a bit uh, more life in it than the other two. So that's why we're swapping these out. And like I said, this can happen considerably fast. I would have never thought I had only 685 kilometers, they'd be shot, and yet here we are. I know guys with uh, almost three times that, and uh, their brakes are fine. So I think it depends on where you ride and how you ride is going to depend on how long uh, these things last but you do want to keep an eye on them because like I said I would have never thought this quickly they'd be shot. I'm just cleaning out all the dirt and the crud and stuff. Um, 
Articat and, and probably all the quad manufacturers really uh, don't recommend or don't say that you have to put um, any lubricant on these slides. Um, the service manual for the bike indicates that you do need to put lubrication on the O-rings that are inside here before they're inserted. You also want to lubricate those. Obviously, if you're mudding and going through puddles and whatnot, that's not going to last very long. I'll be plowing with this bike in the winter time, so I actually am going to put some lubricant on there, make me feel a little bit better about uh, myself. So I'm going to put that on there, and uh, you don't necessarily have to. Like I said, the first water mud hole you hit, that's probably going to be gone. But you can see that there's some rust spots developing here, which may cause the pad to hang up a little bit. And then it won't compress all the way. So it's like you're applying the brakes all the time. That could explain the short pad life. Again, if the previous owner was always riding in a really hilly area, they were going very fast, they're braking very aggressively. It's gonna wear them down faster, right? So we're gonna clean all this up and then uh, we'll insert the new pads. Because the new pads are thicker than the old ones, you're going to need to compress the brake piston back into the caliper. The way that we're going to do that is with a bar clamp. There are tools specifically for squeezing that back in there. I don't know where mine is right now. It's somewhere in the depths of the toolbox. So we'll just use this guy. It works great. Make sure you're not pressing on uh, the uh, brake cable, or sorry, the brake line. Um, you don't want to mess up the washers and cause that to leak, so just clamp it beside it. It's best and compressed, now you can start putting everything back together, as I discussed earlier. I'm going to lubricate the slides. I will be using it during the winter. And Might help prolong the life of the pads a little bit if they can uh, release fully without getting hung up. I've removed that o-ring that they put on there for shipping purposes when they send out the bikes from the factory. Alongside of these caliper pins goes in first. Just like that, push it on all the way. Now you're ready to install the brake pads. Obviously the braking surface to the inside there where it's actually going to contact the disc. Slide one side on then the other. Same thing for the other one. One side on and the other. You kind of just give that a weight hole as you get it over the brake disc. The Articat service manual calls for new patch lock bolts. Patch lock bolt is basically a bolt that comes uh, pre-installed with thread, uh, blue thread locker on it. We don't need to buy new ones. We've got a thread locker. So we're gonna put a little bit of blue on there. And these are ready to reinstall. Torque spec on these bolts is 20 foot pounds. Um, it's kind of like a quarter of a turn past what you would do for a spark plug. If you have a torque wrench, torque them to spec. If you don't, 
like I said, kind of snug them like you would a spark plug and then give them a little extra. I've got a torque wrench, so I'll throw that on there before I throw the tire back on. Once that's back together, you can slap your tire back on with your wheel nuts. Depending on what kind of rims you have and, and what color your lug nuts are is going to determine what the torque spec is. On the aluminum wheels with the black lug nuts, which is what I have, torque spec 60 foot pounds. So we'll put the wheel back on, we'll torque that at 60 foot pounds, and we're ready to burnish the brake pads. In order to have the full braking power of your brake pads, the service manual says to burnish them. The way that you're going to accomplish that is to have an open space where you can take the bike up to 30 miles per hour or 50 kilometers an hour, depending on what uh, metric you're using here. And then you need to take the bike down to under five mile per hour or zero. And you're gonna do that, you're gonna repeat that process, get up to that speed, stop the bike, get it up to that speed. You're gonna do that 20 times. And then they're saying that that's gonna be the full braking performance of your pads once they're properly broken. So that's the procedure in order to do that. The procedure for the opposite side is exactly the same. We've already changed those when we did the axle. The only thing left to do is to burnish the brake pads, which we discussed earlier. If you like the content we're putting out, don't forget to hit the like button on this video and subscribe to our future content. You can check us out on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook. If you want to get your own 360 North gear, a portion of which always goes to charity, you can check out our website at 360north.com. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you next time.